Uh, I knew I wanted to be a plant breeder, and as part of the curriculum, uh, I was taking a course in forages. And I sat there on the first day listening to this forage evangelist, Daryl Miller. He was a professor at the University of Illinois, an alfalfa breeder. Very inspiring guy. And I was sold right away on the first day. I knew that this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I had a uh, very strong science background before I went into uh, plant breeding. And it's been the, the chemistry and the physics and the math that has really been helpful because I can do things. It allows me to do some very basic thinking that I think has been very helpful throughout my career. The work initially started was to address some of the, the problems of the dust bowls of the 30s, which was a big environmental problem. And now we're working on it for bioenergy which is to address some other environmental problems, namely global warming. What we've done is we've gone out and collected this native grass from old prairie remnants that are still available. Uh, very, very small pieces of land scattered all throughout the Midwest. And we've collected seeds and those seeds have formed the basis of our breeding program. The switchgrass, it's got high yield and it also has a seed that can be easily planted. A very few insect and disease problems, uh, very, very drought tolerant. It's a perennial, it only has to be seeded once and then it maintains stands indefinitely. And, it, and of course it has relatively high biomass yield. So it has a lot of environmental benefits as, as well as for high uh, fuel uh, yields per acre. Switchgrass has two main types. There's what we call the upland type and the lowland type. The lowland type comes from uh, bottomlands, river areas, and uh, the upland type comes from higher elevations, more droughty soils, and morphologically they're very different from each other. The switchgrasses that you find in, say, southern Texas are adapted to that latitude. If you take them to try to grow them in North Dakota, they would winter kill. Conversely, if the switchgrass is found in North Dakota or Wisconsin are moved uh, south to Texas and Mississippi, because they're in a shorter than normal day length, they would flower early and their yields would be reduced, and because of disease pressure, they would likely die. So there's a lot of genetic variation in the switchgrasses that are found in, in, throughout the United States, and so this uh, influences their adaptation to different regions. What we've been doing is we've actually been trying to develop a lowland type that is more northern adapted, which is a little bit unusual. So what we have here is a space plant nursery of switchgrass. There's, there's 6,000 plants of switchgrass in this nursery. So we come through here occasionally throughout the year and we evaluate these plants for disease resistance, for heading date, uh, for vigor, and other characteristics that are important from an agronomic standpoint. Then we'll harvest them for biomass yield. And once we have uh, what we feel is enough data, then we'll go ahead and we'll select a very, very small number of plants out of this nursery to advance to the next generation. A long-term uh, goal for a lot of my forage breeding work is actually to get some of this marginal land that's subject to erosion into a perennial type uh, vegetation. And so my long-term business is actually soil conservation and I'm doing it via plant breeding. The biggest accomplishments are always the release of a new cultivar and then actually having it used in farmers fields and so the first cultivar that I ever released was a switchgrass cultivar called Trailblazer and it, uh, when I first uh, found out that it had been seeded on over 100,000 acres that's, that felt really good. So, And but then you, when you uh, you drive around and you see some of this uh, material being grown on some slopes where it's actually preventing the soil from eroding, but the farmer's still making money off it. Makes you feel good. Uh, things are going to change more in the next 25 years and they've changed in a lot of times. And Plants are going to be called upon to uh, solve environmental problems. Uh, energy is just one of them. There's phytoremediation. We're going to be looking at uh, uh, pharmaceuticals from plants. Plants are going to become more critical to us for not only food and fiber, but for energy and for a lot of other uses. Uh, so I think it's, it's, if I was going to be in plant breeding, this is, this is about as good a time as you'd like.